right welcome to main and 5w channel uh, yet another interesting session today on cloud native now cloud native is a very very key topic for the future because we all are in the era where we have adopted cloud in a kind of a mixed or hybrid form but the future could be that you are trying to develop a pure play cloud applications okay basically you write everything for the cloud uh, you design for the cloud, okay? Everything should be on the cloud directly, okay? So that's what the future is about. So we'll briefly talk about cloud native. Before we get into the session, we'll just see some uh, high level demonstration of few things which can really help you understand few components of the cloud native. Number one is there is something called as cloud native computing foundation. Now, it is very important for all of you to visit that because Every OEM has, has some kind of strategy for cloud native. This includes Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Service, uh, Azure. Uh, I'll show you some of the frameworks, what they've developed. Uh, but as a developer, you know, if, you, if you are a Python developer, Java developer, or you're already developing something, you need to have a way by which you, how you can get started off. So you can adopt one of the vendors based on the customer requirement, blah, blah, blah. But Cloud Native Computing Foundation is basically, uh, uh, no, it's it's host critical components of the technology infrastructure. It actually brings the top developers, end users, vendors. Okay, it's a lot. Just open source uh, developer conferences also has been conducted here. It's a non-profit Linux foundation. Okay, now coming to. What they do is they create a lot of uh, memberships and uh, you can see that a lot of interesting sharing happens here. So this is a very important site to really be tuned in. And they do a lot of projects. Basically, they do a lot of certifications on which are very open and there are a lot of community around. So this is one very important because if you're looking at something very vendor neutral, okay, you need to be here. They also have an architectural diagram which they put across, which I'll show you to in my presentation, which is also interesting to understand how you can map that architectural diagram into your customer uh, business use case and build solutions for the end customer. Okay. So if you really look at like, let's pick up two vendors where, um, how the solutions are looking at. So let's start with uh, uh, the Google Cloud. Now this is the Google Cloud uh, page for the cloud native development so what they're trying to look at is like uh, what google cloud is talking about cloud native is you can build run and operate cloud native application with google cloud so you can embrace the modern approaches like serverless microservice containers quickly code build deploy and manage so the reason why i'm reading this is because one is to really understand cloud native second is to understand a community which is very standardized, which is like a, uh, the Cloud Native Foundation. And then we get into an OEM. So every OEM will speak about some of the tools and technology what they have. So you can build modern application without the fear of vendor lock-in. And there is an end-to-end -end extensibility tool for Cloud Native app development. So you can have cold build package and then run it on the Kubernetes engines and then finally operate on the cloud logging and monitoring, right? So. So this is the brief about uh, the Google Cloud platform and what they do. And they also speak about some of the customer which are already doing a cloud native application development. Like you can see here, like uh, ANC Bank, which delivers software fast, faster without compromising security. You can see the CI CD of the Google Cloud using the cloud native. So you can see a lot more examples here, which can really help you. Uh, the products, what GCP has got is number one, it's got something called cloud code. Okay. You can write, debug and deploy your Kubernetes applications by using the cloud code. Then there is something called cloud build, which is a serverless CI CD platform that enables continuous building, testing and deployment. Then you have a container registry, which stores, manages, and secures your Docker container images. Then there is a Google Kubernetes engine. You have cloud run. And there are a lot of operation suits. So these are the tools which is required for you to develop the cloud native. So for a developer who's been already working on something, you just need to understand these components so that you can move forward fast. Okay. So that's about the cloud native here. So similarly, if you really move on to uh, what Microsoft Azure has got. So same holds good for any of the OEMs, right? 
So if you go into a system integrator or if you go to a, a services company, they will have more uh, you know, a kind of a, a methodology on how you migrate, okay, how you can develop faster. They might have some kind of a plugin, uh, migration tools, blah, blah, blah. So I'm talking about the system integrated, okay? But a product company will have product list, right? So if you look at Microsoft Azure, how they look at this entire thing is they, they you can get uh, they also provide you a lot of tools like uh, best approach for cloud native will be microservice serverless container. You can build the cloud native on the data and the DevOps platforms. And if you really look at data, then they have set of things on how you can build this basically by using the Azure database. Similarly, if you really look at DevOps, they have a complete life cycle in terms of how you can use the GitHub. Azure pipelines, Azure boards, Azure monitor, Visual Studio and Kubernetes service. Basically by using this uh, products, uh, you can actually develop this entire uh, cloud native solution. Similarly, when you go into the uh, into your database stuff, you have a lot of these products like Azure SQL da database, Azure database for MySQL. All these are available for cloud native. So that's the solution you have from Microsoft Azure. So the reason why I wanted to shift you into these two perspective is so what we have seen up to this point is so cloud native is basically a mix of like DevOps standards, continuous delivery, microservice, container, trying to um, start your entire delivery or development process on the cloud. These are some of the concepts. There is an open source forum. Every OEM has got some list of tools. Okay, it's so from an enterprise architecture framework, so you always see the customer and then decide. Okay, now let's move forward to understand cloud native more from a conceptual perspective, right? Before we end the session. So first thing, which is very, very key, you can see that this comes from the CNCF, which I just showed you. This is one slide which can really get you visualizing the entire cloud native framework. So in my experience states that if you make this entire screen blank, suppose you remove the icons from each of these areas, like, uh, like you can, let me just explain to you what is there. If you see the bottom side of this entire architecture stack, it's infrastructure, right? So there are a lot of uh, vendors which provide you the infrastructure. So when you visit a customer, you may want to understand what is the current access infrastructure. So is it optimized? Is it running to the core? Is it having all the functional parameters? So what is the kind of new application which is coming in? So what kind of new infrastructure do you need? So you need to really maybe color, create color codes on what is there, what they require, and what is desirable and what might be required in the future. So that's what you will fill the infrastructure. But you have a framework of what are the proven technology which are there on the infrastructure. So after that, you can see that there is something called provisioning layer. In provisioning layer, you have infrastructure automation, host management, and you have secure images. And for all of these, there is already tools. For example, for, example, for infrastructure automation, Terraform is one of the commonly used. Cloud Formation is another use. You use Cloud Coreo. Now, you may need to understand how does the end customer currently do the infrastructure automation and what tools are today available. If there is no tool, then you are recommending those tools as an architect practice, right? Similarly, for host management and tooling, you might want to see whether they're using Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Salt, Salt Stack, uh, what they're using it, and is it very consistently used? Are they using it for one project? Are they consistently using across? You need to analyze. So this is a very long drawn process, right? Similarly, for secure images, there are a lot of tools like Twistlock, Aqua, Anchor, Claire, and what do they use for that, right? So that's the second layer, which is provisioning. On the top of it, you can see a lot of runtime. In a runtime, you have something called OS, cloud native storage, you have container runtime, cloud native networks. For OS, you might have tools like Snappy, Ranker, Photon, uh, and then for cloud native storage, you might use things like Amazon S3, uh, which is quite uh, you know, uh, heard name. Then you have something called Rook, you have Solidfire, you might need to figure out what is that they're trying to use. Hadoop is another example. For container runtime, we use uh, Docker, we, we could use Hyper, blah, blah, blah. And for cloud native network, we could use v, VMware, uh, Docker. So what is very important for you is to really split this runtime into different parts and see whether it is desirable for a customer to have so much of split. Sometimes if the you need to keep the 
architecture simple, right? So you can leave it blank in case you feel that this is not, this is an overdoing for this particular requirement. The next is about the orchestration and management. You have three parts here again, scheduling and orchestration, coordination and service delivery, and then you have service management. For scheduling and orchestration, you have Kubernetes, Swarm, Mesos, Nomad, AWS, ECS. You might still have to figure out. Similarly, for coordination service delivery, you have ETCD, Consul, Register, uh, Netflix OSS. So this is something which you can use. For service management, you have tools like DataWire. Uh, you have heard about WAMP. Uh, all these are tools which are available, right? Now, fundamentally, what we have seen when we go into a customer is sometimes there are custom tools developed. Sometimes the tools are across the OEMs. Sometimes the tools are really built for a project. Okay, you need to get those analysis on the table. If you see the topmost layer, it's about application definition and development. So you have databases. So what database do they use? Redis, or they're using Oracle database, they're using MySQL. Here you will see a huge complications because projects could have been built incrementally over a period of last five to 10 years. If you're visiting a large logistics company or a uh, retail company, insurance company, finance company, because they all are existing for the last 30, 40, 50 years. And there will be a lot of applications which are using the older SQL, uh, Oracle database, they're using the older transaction systems. So you need to really figure out how you're going to uh, normalize. This itself becomes a big project for you on data modernization, right? Similarly, you have data warehouse, like whether you're using BigQuery, Sparks, Druid, Kubol, so you need to really figure out what is that they're using today and how do you really optimize this, you know, whether they want to use Snowflake, uh, SQL Data Warehouse, blah, 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 right? Now we are not talking about the uh, requirement versus mapping, but we are talking about like uh, ideally if somebody has to build the, the CNF landscape in the next 10 years, how do they really know what are the building blocks? Where do the co co companies stand and how you can really build it over a period of time, okay? Similarly, if you look at streaming, streaming is very, very key in this current world of you know, what we are in with the emerging technology. So you have Kafka, you have Flink, you have Storm, you have RabbitMQ, Spark, okay? So you need to really figure out what they're using and what is best suitable for the project, okay? The next is the language and framework favorite part of a developer uh, stuff like whether they're using Angular, they're using Java, React, using Spring, okay, uh, Ruby on Rails, PHP, Python, uh, and it is very important for you to really standardize these things because it really helps for scalability. So, what are the SCM they use? Uh, whether they're using GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and what is the difference? What are the advantage they see? Is it really advantage for them? Do you need to really check? Similarly, for registry service, you have tools like Sonar Type, Atomic, um, and what is the tool best suited? For application definitions, uh, you have Maven, uh, you have Gradle, Apache, Brooklyn. So you need to really figure out what is best suit. The next is the most uh, important thing because we are today in the agile DevOps world where continuous integrations and CICD is one of the most commonly used words. So you need to really have a lot of standardization here, whether you're using Jenkins, Bamboo, uh, Drone, okay? Uh, they might be using something like, you know, a code ship. Uh, so you need to figure out what is the best tool suited for this particular requirement. For services as code, you have a lot of tools like, you know, uh, SendGrid, Shop, Shopify, IMG, like, so you need to figure out what is the tool for that. And last but not the least for API management, so you're using RPG, MuleSoft, uh, Zapier. Again, the key message for all the people who are listening here is like the headings, what you see here, or the, or the left-hand side corner, like infra, provisioning, runtime, orchestration, application. And the heading you see uh, horizontally, like what you see, you need to really understand that these are the high-level building blocks. At the right-hand side, you can see that there are uh, platforms, basically you want to really uh, look at what is the pass or a container service they want to use or they want to use uh, basically uh, you know, or they're using a docker or they're using uh, convox so you can see there are a lot of tools there so you need to figure out that similarly for monitoring what kind of tool are they using right for logging or they're using elastic or splunk or fluentd 
Similarly, for event-based compute, what is the tool they're using and for tracing what they're using. So, I'm, so this is a complete uh, coverage, okay? In terms of, you no, know, if you if you go into a customer, maybe I'll just take an example. If you're visiting a customer who's been there in business for last 50 years, somewhere you'll be, you'll be able to really map if you make this entire uh, architecture blank and you start putting what the customer access is and then you do an analysis about what is the kind of projects they are planning for the next five to ten years or two years and then maybe you can recommend what are the kind of two bs they should be right so something about cloud native it's actually a metamorphosis because uh, the applications in cloud native is built in the cloud for the cloud and it has to maximize the benefit of cloud okay so that is where it is uh, going to be a little bit difficult because every time there is a change management required on thinking there is always a kind of a shakiness so this is an example of a big ball of mud i think we have heard about this an anti pattern a, a big ball of mud is a software system that lacks a perceivable architecture Okay, which is although undesirable from a software engineering point of view, such systems are common in practice due to business pressures, developer turnover code. What happens in a typical uh, customer uh, requirement and delivery, right? So let's be very practical in this call. So there is a lot of uh, ambitions and enthusiasm created in the beginning of the project, but as it moves on, there can be a lot of entropy created because Delivery takes over the uh, entire, uh, no, uh, the limelight I could call because the billing happens through that. So there can be pieces of uh, uh, areas where you miss, okay, incrementally in the next three years or four years. Uh, that creates a huge amount of an anti-pattern and post which to rework that, to change the entire architecture or delivery becomes so complex. So do it right first time. At least do the right approach is a very important area to focus because customer is going to trust the service providers on this particular area. It is very important for the service provider to take responsibility that they don't push through something because of business pressures or uh, there is no developer uh, turnover or there is a mix of code entropy. Okay. Now code entropy is very important because writing a code is different from writing the right code. Okay, going to the next thing, if you really see the, the deployment target types is also changed now. Like for example, you're writing it for a virtual machine like AWS, Azure, Oracle Cloud, IBM. You're writing it for a container like Docker, Rocket, Run C. Platform as service is basically Bluemix or application container, serverless like Amazon Lambda, OpenBase, Microsoft Functions. So, so the entire terminology is changing, okay? And uh, this is something which uh, all the people who are want to really pick up um, Cloud Native should go through the 12 factor app on how the applications uh, methodology is to be built for a software and service. We'll cover this in a separate session, but I just want to mention this because this is a very important area. The website link is up and it will cover lot of 12 factors which are required to run an applications uh, very optimized on the uh, in general and also on the cloud so you can actually go through it this needs a lot of time to explain so i'm just leaving it for people but why is this relevant here because when we build this new generation of application which is cloud native and 12 fact 12 factor also is very important okay so some of the areas which is very important is what we have highlighted here okay so what is the microservice architecture? Uh, this is a source from software architecture pattern by Mark Richards. So you can see that there is a client request, there is an interface layer, different service components of build and this it's it's consumed. Okay, so you have my Microsoft service helps in separately deployed units. So you can see that there is a rest call done for every service component and the module is being uh, the request or really served. Okay. This is how it works, the Microsoft microservices architecture. Now you can you can also uh, look at it like from a user interface layer, it goes to a lightweight message broker and then it goes to the service component. 
then what is the key advantage of this particular microservice architecture? It's got agility, it's got deployment, testability, scalability, de development. So very important part is when you balance the wheels, uh, performance is not going to be a key thing for microservice architecture because it has to move through the network. You can see that the layering really slows down the entire process. So performance is compromised. It doesn't mean like systems are going to be very slow, but that is, a, that is something which you need to really compromise on the performance. From a cloud architecture, if you really see, there is a processing unit, there is a virtualized middleware like messaging grid, data grid, processing grid, deployment manager. And then here you can get performance, deployment, agility, but testability and development becomes a key problem. So every architecture has got a plus and a minus. Okay, Nothing is perfect. So architecture analysis, if you really see from a software engineering, quality assurance, technology, if you really see DevOps uh, is a in, in between. Every type, which is a layered, even driven, microkernel, microservice, or a space-based, right? Based on the parameter, the left-hand side, you will have a plus and minus to each of them. So I leave it to you guys to analyze it, but overall you need to understand like while you're getting into the cloud side and when you're pretty serious in terms of delivering large scale projects, you need to understand the, the merits and demerits of each type of architecture. There is also a service-based architecture on microservice when a consumer uh, is asking for a service, is designed for maximum agility, size of the service is limited, unit of deployment to one service, each service will be autonomous. Okay, It's not focused on the enterprise level reuse. So microservice, source code, good runtime environment and administration is fine. Okay. And then the next point is small is a new big, right? So this is what uh, Sam Newman's very interesting thing like uh, shared with me the idea that we should think our role more as a town planners and architects for the built environment, right? So that's very interesting, like small is a new big. So what this means is like you are trying to break down things into a smaller parts so that it's easy for you to manage. So microservice breaks up your application into many small pieces to get features to market quickly. Each microservice will get small and independently deployable. It's decoupled. It will have its own team to design, develop, deploy and maintain. It exposes an API. It has its own database. Okay, that's microservice for you. And uh, developers also get a concept of polyglot. It means like they can write three microservices. One they can write in Node.js, another they can write in R, the third you can write in Erlang. So we all know like, um, if you have not heard, there are more than 100 plus programming languages today available, right? So it's not simply, it's Python, Java, and a couple of them, right? So you can actually pick the language, that's called polyglot. And uh, the goal of cloud is the time to market. It's not about long-term maintainability, okay? Uh, so you can rewrite the microservice, it's independent. You might have an application, for example, Uber app where the customer is, uh, module is uh, down, but the billing module will work because they are independent. Okay, the failures are well managed. So this is the Gartner's DevOps model catalog of DevOps. You can see that uh, it talks about people, culture, technology, and process. Right. And this is a very important uh, model to really look at because while you're delivering the cloud native applications, you're breaking down into pieces, having everybody develop them separately and then roll it out, the independent running, debugging might be difficult, integration might be difficult, but it's easy to manage, easy to scale, easy to change, blah, 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 right? So DevOps from the other side, from a delivery, from waterfall model to DevOps, what you do is you're creating people from full stack team, job rotation, to create more feature teams, okay? And you're creating autonomous teams. At the other side, from a technology per perspective, you're trying to build infrastructure as a code, developer self-service, integrated tool chain. And from a process perspective, you're building the continuous integration, testing, delivery, uh, automated testing, automated build, release automation, okay, the technical depth, test-driven automation, the Chaos monkey, common metrics, all this are built on the process part. And finally, there's a cultural part which people ignore, but very important, like trust culture, collaborative, never done, engineering culture, all this will have to develop. This is a very nice model to really start working on. 
the beauty is not about how you look at it from a devops perspective but how you can integrate this from an overall perspective on when the tools and when technology from the culture all of them work together okay so this is the devops pipeline uh, we know like from plan to code to build to test to package to release to deploy to monitor right so for planning you use project project management like agile project management coding you use a team infrastructure thing like code review merge version control documentation for build you use continuous integration for test you use continuous testing for package you use artifact repository for release management you use change management release automation for deployment you use deployment plan infra provisioning infra configuration management and finally use for monitoring use application performance monitoring right so this is the devops pattern we use source code management to continuous integration to continuous management from software to van infra and to monitor okay and you can see that there are a lot of tools at every level which you use we just saw the broader diagram of the same things already so it's very clear for us that everywhere there is a tool which is being used to manage each of the element infrastructure as code is also very important uh, you can see that you are trying to use something like an ansible puppet uh, salt stack or chef you can script your environment basically to install jdk you can write a code you can create a instance of a os and then run this entire module also as part of it so even for container there are different use cases like you have application packaging infrastructure consolidation uh, continuous integration do it yourself pass so this is how the containers used for in a different use case we we have covered what is container in different session but here idea is to look at where where is a container getting utilized so this support function as a service like short running fml stateless invoke single purpose this is something very new like you create some a, a unit of function fas what we call right like a lambda function which we call it in amazon which can, which is independently running the infra is managed by the vendor and then you can get write your own service so this is very interesting uh, code by steve jobs i don't need a hard disk in my computer if i can get to the server faster carrying around this non connected computer is byzantine by comparison right so that's what uh, is very important so micro uh, services forces move to distributed computing right so so i think the thought process what i wanted to share in this entire session for for the team to really look at like cloud native is going to be the future and there could be evolving a lot of architecture which you will uh, go through but end of the day as a to be state you might end up trying to do something very broad and big like this which would be the future thanks for watching now we will get more detail into each of these boxes as we go forward in the sessions thanks